Yeah, um, my name is Tanya Delnay, and I'm here to introduce uh, Pregnancy Resource Center. And with Pregnancy Resource Center, the P stands for Proactive Education. Mm. That is our Willing to Wait program that we go into schools with, our information that um, helps to, to help kids make um, healthy decisions in their life. The R stands for our responsive medical services. That's our services on Cherry, which does um, ultrasounds and they do STD testing and pregnancy testing. And then the C stands for compassionate support services. And those are our services on 28th Street, where we provide diapers, formula, clothing, uh, we have classes, we have um, um, working with parents of young children and um, different tech programs that are available there as well. Uh, I have been with the PRC since October of 2004. So I've been with the PRC for a number of years. And here with me today is um, Natasha. Uh, she heads up our education department and Nicole and Andrew who also work with me in the education department. So I was wondering, how common do you think sexting is among kids right now who are trapped under quarantine and also uh, porn use? Yeah, so with everything going on with COVID-19, there's a lot going on. A lot of people are feeling lonely. Um, they might be feeling scared. I'm sure some people are feeling bored at this point. We have a lot more time to spend online and there might be less time online with supervision. So because of all of those, it can actually lead to some really risky uh, situations or lead to risky decisions. Um, some of those might be sexting and pornography. And people might turn to those uh, looking for a way to fill their needs. Think of it like a bucket, all right? You're trying to fill this bucket with your needs. However, when we're filling these things in with sexting and with porn, it's not truly filling it. So for the moment, for a very short time, it might make us feel happy. It might make us feel in control or give us a way to pass the time. But in the long run, it's not filling those needs. It might end up damaging our relationships in the future or even affecting some of our future goals. The next question is, what are some risks and dangers in doing these type of things? Now, um, one of the risks with sexting, now the definition of sexting is meaning, is meaning sending nudes or pictures without clothes. And it can cause harm to ourselves and others. And before I go on, uh, my, uh, my name is Andrew. And now with, sex, now with sexting, uh, here are a couple things to know. First, it is against the law uh, for anyone under 18 years old. And also, it is against the law to ask someone for a picture if that someone is under 18. It is also against the law to take and send pictures of nudes if the picture of that person is under 18. It is against the law to have pictures of someone without clothes on if that person is under 18. Now, if someone has asked you for a picture, even if you sent them pictures, Please tell an adult. The person who asked for the picture will get in trouble, especially if they are an adult. If you have pictures on your phone or computer, let's just say someone sent them, even if you did not want them to, want them to send those pictures, tell your parents. They can be a witness that you deleted them. Your parent can even call the police and tell them so they so they can catch the person who sent those pictures. And now we're gonna be talking about pornography. Now, pornography or porn are pictures or videos of people without clothes. And it can also ca cause harm to ourselves and others. Now, it can affect three, it can affect three things that we're gonna be talking about. It can affect the brain. Porn is addictive. Watching porn releases chemicals in our brain that changes our thinking. Now watching porn can also lead to depression, anxiety, and addiction. Now 
It can, now, pornography can also affect the heart. Porn is not realistic. It changes the way we think about relationships, people, and sex. Now, studies show that those who watch porn are less satisfied with sex in real life. It also, now, pornography also affects the world. Porn is violent. It increases a negative view of women, increases violent acts, and contributes to sex trafficking. How can kids avoid getting themselves out of these situations? Yeah, thank you for asking that. There are plenty of different things um, and different tools that students can use to help get out of these in, um, situations or even avoid these situations in general. So the first thing I would suggest is only accept friends that you know in real life. There are a lot of people who use social media. And so making sure that the friends that you accept are people that you know, that they're real accounts and real people that you know you can trust. Second thing, don't give out personal information. So your real name, what school you go to, where you live, um, all of that information can be used to help identify you. So to remain safe, it's a good idea not to share. What's interesting is that actually high schoolers, if you're thinking about youth, high schoolers uh, don't do this as well. Younger kids, they hear this, they say, okay, I won't, um, but teens might think that they can handle this, that they know who to trust and who not to trust. However, they can still get in risky situations. So overall, it's just better not to share this information. Third thing, if you are ever talking to someone online, whether it's through a, a gaming app or through social media, and they make you feel uncomfortable or they say something strange, tell an adult about it and leave, all right? Say goodbye and leave. It's never wrong to leave a conversation if you feel uncomfortable about it. Um, if someone sends you a picture of themselves or asks you for a picture, whether with clothes or without clothes, tell a parent or guardian about that. Um, another idea, don't sleep with your phone. Um, when you're using your device, whether it's your tablet, your Chromebook, your laptop, or your phone, use those things in public areas of the house where other people are. It just lowers that pressure and um, reduces the risk of getting into some of those situations. Also a good idea, don't use your devices after 10 p.m. or in your bedroom. Another idea is a lot of our social media accounts and even gaming apps have restriction options in their settings. For example, I'm guessing some of you have a TikTok, right? Maybe some of you have Instagram. Uh, those two social media apps actually in their settings allow you to choose an option where it will eliminate any of that inappropriate content. So that could be a great way to try to protect yourself from that. Finally, it's important to protect your heart. Now earlier I talked about the bucket and how we try to fill our bucket with these things. And it might be temporary things, risky things like porn or sexting, but we need to know that if we truly want to fill our bucket, we need to fill that with real relationships. So investing in those people we really care about, like our friends or our family, and more importantly, God. God can provide us with something that nothing else can. So when we have that true love from God, it's a lot easier to say no to some of those other temptations like porn or like sexting, because God is really the only one who can fill that need in our lives. Move on to the next question. How can parents and mentors keep kids safe? Yeah, um, I'm not only a parent, I'm a grandparent, and I do mentor a lot of younger people. And so to me, the most important thing is communication. It's kind of the key to a relationship is making sure that that communication is put in place. And not just with the big things, it needs to be put in place with the little things as well. And so talk as much as possible with your kids. You know, even on the simple um, conversations, talk with them uh, about um, those normal everyday things. Uh, listen to what their interests are, um, what's happening in their lives right now. Um, another important thing is watch, um, keep an eye, pay attention to them. 
Uh, I know one of the things I, I talk uh, when I do a lesson on sexting in schools uh, with younger kids, uh, our kind of fifth and sixth grade program, um, I'll tell the teacher in the back of the class, you know, to kind of move up a little bit and watch the expressions as I'm talking on the topic. Um, we're dealing with internet safety, but we kind of get to that topic in there and just kind of discuss it briefly. And, and so I said, watch, watch if they're making eye contact with another student or if they're all of a sudden looking down real fast, um, because that may be a sign that they've been involved with something that later they can have a conversation with that student or have a conversation with their parents to, to you know, just kind of uh, get into that conversation with them. Um, as far as parents watching their kids, what's going on, what games are they uh, involved in, what apps are they involved in? Um, one of the things I, I also um, tell students, it's a good thing for your parent to try out the program, the gaming first, which sometimes I get a little kickback on that, but you know, try it out, try, have them try it out first because that's when the pop-ups come weeks after. And so it gives them that little bit of time to try it and see, is this okay for my kids? Am I comfortable with this? Um, make sure that the passwords are there. They need to have the passwords um, on their computers, their phones, um, on those kids' devices. Um, resource, uh, if you're not sure about it, check out protectyoungeyes.com. They have some great um, great information out there that you can go to different blogs and stuff that they have online that you can go to and you can look at and can read you can learn how to do it on your kids phone uh, on your computers so you can put those protections in place the students believe that they're in trouble sometimes even when they're not in trouble because they know that what they're doing is wrong and so they're feeling uncomfortable about it and so they need that assurance uh, that, you know, you did not ask for this to happen. And so, you know, they need that insurance that they have a place that they can come to when they're feeling uncomfortable and having that conversation with them. Kind of final question is, you know, with us being a mentoring organization, how would you encourage mentors to approach this topic, um, especially during this time digitally? Uh, a lot often our uh, mentors are are friends with them on social media? Yeah, the biggest thing there is lead by example. You know, if, if it's something inappropriate for the student that you're mentoring to post, it might be something inappropriate for you to post as well. And so lead by that example, you wanna set that in place. Uh, in a classroom, I might say, if you don't want grandma to see it, then don't put it out there. <laughs> It's, it's something to, to take in and be aware of. Um, share stories in, 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 uh, of your own life, you know? Share stories and statistics of what's out there. Uh, repost some different things. Maybe there's something really good that you see out there and you want them to see it as well. And so share those type of stories and statistics, uh, you know, to make them aware of it. Assume that the kids are being exposed or will be exposed to different things. And so um, help them learn how to, to, to stand up against it. Um, ask them, what are they gonna do if something like that happens in their life? So do the different scenarios. You know, Have you thought about how you would respond if um, somebody asks you to look at something that's inappropriate? How are, how are you gonna do that? Or if someone's sending you an inappropriate picture, what are you going to do? You know, or if someone asks for something, what are you going to do? So help them kind of, you know, work through those different scenarios. And then also help them set boundaries. You know, that the boundaries are going to be very important to them. If the student acknowledges that they're unsafe, um, what are they going to do for their boundary? You know, this is my boundary. This is where I'm not, I'm not going past this point. So half the battle is then already accomplished for you. All right, that's good. Thank you. And just kind of final thing. Um, if uh, kids are struggling with uh, pornography or kind of get involved in kind of these sexual relationships before marriage and especially kind of, you know, digitally, you know, with sexting, 
if they are wanting out of it, is there a way for them to get a hold of, if you can just reiterate how they can get a hold of uh, the Willing to Wait or the Pregnancy Resource Center? So if someone wants to get a hold of us, we do actually have um, an Instagram account and a Facebook account. Those would be great ways to get a hold of us. You can message us through there. We also have an email. So if you ever want to email us a question, it would be just ask at willingtowait.com. And Donnie, we can send you this too if, if you wanna give them a written form of where these things are. Um, we also have some other resources if people wanna look into this more. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen one more time so people can see those. So there's different statistics on here. Um, Protect Young Eyes is a great resource. Um, different protection softwares if they wanna try to filter through some of the information so they don't get pop-ups that they don't want and things like that. But yeah, always feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. We love answering student questions. All right, well, thank you. So any other thoughts or encouragement? I would just say be there for them. You know, this, they're struggling with a lot of different things right now. And just, just be that constant presence in their life. All right. Well, thank you. So really appreciate you guys' time uh, and navigating this topic with us. Thank you.